Hello everyone, let's look at this factoring problem here. Um, I'm using this problem as an introductory problem for um, for factoring trinomial the form ax squared. Yeah, so I want to consider a form of ax squared plus bx and then plus c. And so we, we try to use this one as just for an introduction of factoring this. And how do we do this one? I use what we call a trial and error method. We just Guess the combination and then we try it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, we try another combination to, to check whether it works. Okay, so now let's get started on this problem. Um, the way that we do this problem is that we first, we we need to look at the coefficient of the quadratic term, which is the x squared term here. Um, the number in front of the x squared, that's called the coefficient and that number, because we don't see any number right here. So we will assume that's a one, right? So we'll, we'll say that, okay, so since we have a one here, and because when we use the trial and error, we are trying to reverse the foiling process. So what we are doing is that we are going to just think about two numbers that when we multiply them together, we are going to get a one. And so we want to just think about um, integers. And so in this case, we are going to use two numbers, integers that will multiply to one. And there was only one combination here. We have one and one. And of course, you may say we can use negative one and negative one, and we multiply them, we get positive one. Uh, to just keep things simple, if this number is positive, we just want to always use the um, two numbers that will multiply to this one, and they're both positive. And so that's what we want to do. Okay, now uh, what we are doing is that we are going to just write down. Um, the two turns that will multiply to this x squared. So let's do that. And we have one x and one x here. So let's write it down. Okay, so we actually need to multiply them vertically down. So this you can see here, this is one x times another one x, which will give us one x squared. Okay, now the next one is to think about uh, this 21. And we need to think about two integers that will multiply to this 21. You, uh, eventually, we need also need to worry about the signs, but I choose to uh, put pluses right here so that we don't need to worry about the signs right now. So let's think about what two numbers can multiply to 21. And the easiest combination that we can think of, of course, would be 1 times 21. And then we can actually do this systematically, but there are not too many combinations for the 21. Uh, the other combination, 2 does not go into 21, so 2 doesn't work. And then um, the next one will be 3. And so you know that 3 goes into 21. And what about the other number that you need to multiply the 3 by so that you can get the 21? That will be 7. OK, so that's uh, those are all the combinations that we have. And we are not going to consider negative like numbers right now. So, so just two combinations. Now, um, since we are just doing trial and error, we got to just pick a choice and think about how we can get um, how we can get the correct combination. And so how do we do that? We we can choose one and 21 or we can choose three and seven. And the way that we choose which combination is that we look at the middle turns coefficient. This number is a 10 here. Now we just need to think about whether 1 and 21, if we add them or subtract them, can we get the 10? Or when we look at the 3 and the 7, whether we add them or subtract them, we can get the 10. And so the answer is quite obvious. We can actually just add the 3 and the 7 to get the 10. So we are going to choose this combination here, the 3 and the 7. So let's put that here. And then you may say, does the order matter on how we put the 3 and the 7? In this case, it doesn't really matter here uh, because you you have one x and one x right here, so there is no need to worry about uh, whether you should put the three first or the seven first. So either way, it's going to be the same. So now let's just put the three first, and then the seven. Okay, so the next step is that we need to multiply them this way, indicated by the two lines. Or well, you can draw an arrow just to remind yourself, okay, so we got to multiply them this way. And so if you do that, then you are going to get what? So let's follow the arrow. 1x times 7 will give will get what? 7x. And then 1x times 3, we're going to get 3x. 
and see that if you're adding them, then you are going to get the 10x right here. So you can add them vertically down. I usually don't even bother writing this down, but this is the first video that I'm doing. So I'm just going to write this down. So positive 3x adding 7x will give us positive 10x. And as I told you before, you, we will need to worry about the signs later on. But for now, we just don't need to worry about any of the signs because they're all positive here. Okay, so this combination works. Now, all we need to do is to write down the final answer. And actually, the answer is already given here once we finish uh, checking this. And how do we write down the answer based on whatever that we put here? Um, you actually just need to look at this combination right here. And you just read across to write on the answer. So how do we do that? We are going to write down the factorization. So the answer, okay, so the answer is what? It's 1x. And then, and then there was a 3 here. So what is the sign for this 3? We assume it's positive, right? Because we are, we're having everything that's positive. So we assume it's positive. So it's going to be x plus 3 because because uh, we don't put anything here, we assume it's positive, so x plus 3. And then what about, what about the second factor? The second factor would be just x, and then there is no negative signs right here. We assume it's positive, so x plus 7. It's actually 1x plus 7, so we can just simply just put x plus 7. And so we have our factorization. That's finished. OK, um, and then you may say, why does this process work? Uh, this is really this when we draw the arrows like this, we actually are reversing the um, the foiling process. If you just think about it this way, when we do the foiling, it's the x times the x. That's the first, right? So if you look at that, that's x times x. We get we get this portion right here. One x times one x will give us the x square. But now when you look at the x times the positive seven, let's look at it this way. So when you do the outer. When you do the outer, it's actually, this is what, this is the outer, and that will give us the, what, the 7x. It's because when we do 1x times 7, we'll give us, we'll get the 7x. And as you can see here, we have the 1x times the 7, so that's how we can get the 7x. What about the inner? The inner is, a, it's going to be the same thing. The inner would be just this portion right here. And so the inner would be 3x because we take the positive 3 and then multiply by the x right here. And so that's actually this portion right here, as you can see. So now let me just highlight the color so that you can see how each step works. And so that 7x is done, it's in green. Yeah, so this x times 7 is actually given by this multiplication here, so 7x. The inner is given by... Uh, the three times the x, so we get the three x here. Okay, so now when you add them together, the seven and the three x added together, then we get the 10 x. And then what about the 21? The 21 is actually the last, right? The last turns multiply together three times seven. And actually you can see that here, it will, it will give us the 21. So that's how this process works. This is, um, and why do we call this trial and error? It's because we we got to try the combination and to check whether it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, and when it doesn't work, we don't need to get frustrated. We just need to just keep trying until it works, unless the problem is not meant to be uh, factorable over the set of integers. Then we cannot really factor it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for this problem. We'll do more problems next time to just just to show how this method works. Okay, so thank you for watching. See you next time.